How's it going, people? This is WW Movie Maker, and you are listening into the number one place to get your rumors, reports, news, and controversy for WW Man. How's it going? It's one hell of a day today, man. It's been raining like shit outside. It's been raining for the past three days, four days, and it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop. I hate rain. I hate it so much. Because truly, if I'm going to tell you, man, it really, it does adjust your mood, I guess. It does change the way you feel at times. And I'd rather like the sun being out there for most of the day. You know, uh, it is Thursday today, right? May the 5th or the 4th. I can't even tell. I think it's the 4th. It's the 4th today. Tomorrow's Friday. And you know why I know it's Friday tomorrow? Because normally I don't know what day of the week it is. But the reason why I know tomorrow's Friday is because I have booked tickets to go watch the Guardians of the Galaxy, volume number two. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go be seeing that movie. I got it booked for 7.20 tomorrow at my local theater, and I'll be go seeing it. Uh, it's like literally the first time that I actually booked a ticket <clears throat> to go see a movie. Normally, I go to the, uh, the actual uh, location and just get my ticket there for whatever time I'm going at. But this time, I actually bought it online because well i have a feeling like the last time i went to the theaters here's a good story for you guys to listen to the first time i saw gardens of the galaxy it was in yeah it was i believe they released in 2014 it was during the summertime right so kids people they're all they're all on vacations they're on holidays so people are going to have a lot of time to go see this all right it was during the night right and when you go see nighttime movies obviously the uh the, the there are crowds like theater is packed and there was no different i walked in right i think my theater or the auditorium I was in, you know, I had probably like a good three, four hundred seats in that auditorium. So there's a lot of seats there. And they were all packed. I got, my friends were sitting in the second row in the auditorium. The second row. Like, I, I had to put, my neck was so bad after it. Like, I could barely bend my neck. If I did, it was cracking so bad. It felt like I needed neck surgery. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I, my head was like looking up the whole way. The whole time it was just looking up, my neck was bent, and it felt like shit, right? Um, the best thing about it was is that, you know, uh, I was able to at least lay down a little bit because there was some space between the uh, the uh, the guys in front and where I was sitting, so there was some room for leg space, obviously. And I just sat down there relaxed, and uh, I had a nice cold beverage, uh, a slushy beside me, so I drank that, tried to keep myself cool. And it was cool in the theaters anyway, so it wasn't like I was sweating or anything, sweating my balls off during the summer but i was sitting there and i was looking up the whole way just just you know like your neck a full 90 degree up just like that and it was so it pissed me off but uh obviously i i was there to watch the movie i wasn't pissed off at the movie and since the movie was so great i nearly forgot that i was uh, sitting in the second row um no that's not the case. Uh, I knew I was sitting in the second row and I hated it. And that's what happens when you don't arrive to the theaters on time. And that's what I got to do this time. I booked the tickets. And this time, I'm going to be there like fucking 30, 40 minutes earlier. I, you know what? I should go there an hour earlier. I'm going to get some food. right? I'm going to go inside the auditorium, take a piss, go sit you know, inside, and hopefully get the... Uh, I always like sitting in the back. you know. Who doesn't like sitting in the back? Whether it's sitting at the back of the bus. You know, you got a double-decker bus sit on the second... Uh, uh, you know the top of the bus whatever the case is who wants to sit in the front nobody wants to sit in the front right i'm gonna go there sit in the back and enjoy two and a half hours of entertainment all right now we were sitting down there and watching that i can't wait gardens of galaxy number two i have i i partially did see the trailer i didn't really get that much time to see the full trailer because i was uh well I, I get no time and over top of that i know gardens of the galaxy you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, it, it's like it's like when you hear the name, you're like, oh, man, that was a good movie. I got to go see it, right? So Guardians of the Galaxy is one of those movies where I don't need to see the trailer, you know? I, I know I know the uh, the series. I know uh, what they're about. And uh, I booked the tickets, and I was like, I don't care. I don't really want to see the trailer. I just want to go there and watch the movie and not know anything. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. $13.50 is how much it cost. Uh, I did not get... Um, I did not get... Uh, vip seats or uh you know i didn't any reserved seats i didn't i didn't uh buy any of that or purchase tickets for that um I, maybe i should do that next time but obviously that would have cost more money i just wanted to buy my ticket so i can go straight into the theater give it to the ticket holder and walk in instead of waiting at the uh 
the cashiers and the, and the box office to get my ticket and walk in. So that's what my plan is for tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as for the rest of the week, the rest of the week, it is Friday tomorrow. Uh, I will see if I can get a a few videos up tomorrow. Um, I might be a little busy tomorrow. That's why today I'm recording this. It seems like uh, I'll, I'll try not to go over uh, an hour on this, but I'll try to be making a 30, 40 minute video uh, or podcast today about WWE and news. Um, so I might be busy tomorrow. Um, yeah, man. And that's all I got going for me today. And so, you know, the theaters tomorrow, you know, uh, it was pretty busy this week. This rain is killing me. I hate the weather in this area. I really wish. I'm telling you, man, it's May. And we're still getting these fucking temperatures, man. Um, I was watching, on another note, I was watching the Toronto Raptors play uh, yesterday. Uh, the Toronto Raptors versus uh, Cleveland. Yeah, that game was on yesterday for the playoffs. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever games are on, I normally watch. Uh, in terms of basketball or hockey or whatever, um, and yesterday they had Toronto and the, the the Cleveland Cavaliers play, man, man Toronto. I can tell you right now, man, they're a team that really have rallied up in the past few years. They really have stepped up their game to face teams like Cleveland and everything. I was watching for fun, and I got I, my it caught my eye that you know the last game I was watching, they were also in Cleveland and they were leading by 20 points and it was the exact same scenario here um, and uh, for that specific reason I thought uh, this was just a rerun of that uh, game that they were playing earlier but uh, it was game two in fact of the series or of this round man if I were if I were people that criticized the Raptors a lot I would think twice about it because I've seen the Raptors come back um, I think last year they faced Cleveland as well in the in the, in, in the finals, and they were actually tied with them in the series three three, and they lost the last game, which was obviously in Toronto, uh, and you know they put up a good fight. I don't know, you know, there's been a lot of teams, but you know, in terms of the Raptors, you know where they've been, you know what they've done, and you know, you know where they are at this point um, compared to everything they've done before. Last year was their best year in their franchise history. And you know Kyle Lowry and Demar Derozan, two uh, uh, main guys on the team. Uh, when they're when they're going, man. When 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 Kyle Lowry is taking those threes, when Demar Derozan is driving up into the paint, everything is perfect. When one of those guys is slacking, the whole team sort of falls down, and that's what I've noticed in uh, the past, uh, you know, three four playoff seasons that they've had uh, they haven't been doing that great when uh either one of them or even both of them when both of them are down you know uh i think it was just yesterday the game demar derosa scored five points five points i believe i don't know if it was the first half or was it the whole game if it was the whole game then that's that's a disappointment that's an embarrassment but um yeah they need to step up their game their the next two games are in toronto i have a feeling they could tie the series 2-2 two, two, but you know, don't doubt them yet, man. They got ways to go. Uh, in terms of the other basketball games, other playoff games that are happening, uh, I don't really watch a lot of the other ones, but I did hear, hear the Antonio San Antonio Spurs uh, won last night uh, against the Houston Rockets. Uh, you know, James Harden, a bona fide Hall of Famer one day, you know, playing with his team. The guy, I, I believe they, I uh, can't remember what team they faced in round one, but I heard that they swept that team or... They didn't swept them. They really, they pretty much uh, destroyed them uh, head on. Anyways, uh, Houston is looking very promising. San Antonio Spurs, they've they've done wonders last year. Hopefully, they do wonders this year as well. Um, but we'll see where that goes. That's just a little basketball news for you. Uh, I just, I just want to point that out. I was watching some basketball yesterday. I decided, you know what? I'll just talk about it here, anyways. Um, and uh, I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get right into the news as of right now, and uh, a lot of WWE news. You know. Uh, lately, I've seen Raw and SmackDown, right? And normally, who, what I do is is I would be watching a lot of wrestling on the network or even on YouTube just to spare some time because, you know, uh, when I'm bored, that's what I do in my free time, watch wrestling. And now, a lot of days, I don't really watch that a lot of, you know, so much just because, you know, I guess I watch it once and to re keep keep on watching wrestling over and over again, I'm not a mark for it, right? I'm, I'm somebody who likes watching it just like everybody else and reports on it, but I'm not somebody who has no life and watches that every single day. So, you know, uh, I've been hearing a lot of news and I wasn't able to report a lot of things yesterday or even the day before, but there is a lot of news in the past week that I will be reporting on here today. All right. We got news like very, very shocking. 
out of the blue, we got new leaked pictures of WWE former Raw Women's Champion Charlotte. Shocking, especially not not just not just what happened, but who it happened to. Absolutely shocking. Got news on the Undertaker. I was supposed to report this yesterday, but again, I was busy this week. Undertaker arrives in New York City. He's already there at this point, and he's undergoing surgery. This really riled up fans, man. Breaking kayfabe again. Rest in peace. Titus O'Neil deletes a photo of Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman in a picture together in their European tour. They were in Rome at the Casaloma. I saw a lot of their uh, Instagram posts and their their stories. And Titus O'Neil was so dumb enough to post this picture on Twitter. Also, the X-Pac story continues. We got X-Pac who... Apparently, was arrested for handling meth and weed, marijuana. Uh, apparently, he was going to the UK for India wrestling, where he had a, a, a wrestling. Uh, he had to go to the UK because he had dates set. But apparently, he was went missing, and apparently, was arrested. Triple H accuses X Pac of being the worst meth dealer. And to end it off today, we got Kevin Owens, who again. Uh, this past week on SmackDown, won the U.S. title. He used a DDT on the floor rather than his usual apron powerbomb to pay tribute to two legends. Who are those two legends? We will find out today right now. Let's get right into the news and let's start off with what everybody wants to talk about. The internet fans, or the internet wrestling fans, IWC react to WWE superstar Charlotte's reported leaked Pictures. This is happening to everybody. Right? We got Paige, Seth Rollins, apparently Alexa Bliss, apparently Summer Rae. They're denying it. But then Charlotte here actually does not deny it. She, as a matter of fact, uh, hates and is obviously pretty pissed off about this. And we just hope that she doesn't go into the state that Paige was in. I remember Paige saying that she nearly wanted to harm herself. That is a very, very uh, huge step to go to. Um, and these kinds of things can cause that to happen. Hope that doesn't happen to Charlotte, though. Now, Charlotte has unfortunately fallen victim to the same controversy as Paige and Seth Rollins. Um, now, Charlotte Flair has seemingly become the next victim again. Uh, it's said uh, by a lot of social media sites and Charlotte as well that the privacy of her and leaked photos have been revealed onto the internet it's sad that the privacy of these people has to be invaded and that people are trying to ruin the reputation naturally this won't affect her career and by no means should it uh she's proven herself to be one of the company's most favorite and marketable stars Uh, her father rick flair has stated that she is one of the fastest to ever pick up the wrestling business compared to her legendary uh comparing her to the legendary kurt angle that is indeed high praise for charlotte um, right now she's facing tough times, but again, people are saying it wasn't her fault. Uh, we got a WWE, uh, former women's champion, Sonny, who actually said that these leaked photos, uh, are partially the fault that the women or the people who post them out, uh, or even take them are actually at fault as well. Not just the people that leak them out. And I understand that. And that makes sense. Total sense. I don't want to sound like the piece of shit hag on this freaking, uh, uh, you know, on the internet right now, but you shouldn't be doing this in the first place anyways, right? Otherwise, you know, this wouldn't have happened. But it's happening because there, there was something to leak, according to the people, and they leaked it. If there was nothing to leak, they wouldn't have done anything. They would have left you alone. But, you know, you don't do those kind of things, so especially what Paige did. It's pretty retarded, you know, and uh, obviously where you are now or where she is now, where everybody else is now, it's, uh, it's upsetting. And it's really sad. It's just a retarded thing for the people that did it. And leak the photos out as well. Now, some of the fans show their support here. They said, uh, people are tweeting. One person said, now Charlotte, kidding, right? F you to whoever did this. Another person said, damn, that sucks. Charlotte is one of the top female talents of the main roster. And if this ruins her career, then I'm done. Another person said, I hope Charlotte is okay. Another person says, oh, geez, poor Charlotte. Why are people like this? Stay strong, Queen Charlotte. Your fans are true to you and still love you and support you. I feel sorry for the Queen. Stay strong. You're my favorite wrestler. Don't let these haters bring you down. Keep up your good work. Stay strong, gorgeous. I know you'll get through this. I don't care what none of y'all have to say. I still love her. And 
She tweeted out that I get my sleep and somebody responded to her saying, stay strong. Hackers have got your nudes too. And they are spreading it all over social media, right? Uh, so people also said, oh my God, why are people like this? Shitty, what happened? Best of luck. Hope you will stay strong. Yep, yep. That's what people have been saying. Haters going to hate. They can't handle the perfection. Charlotte Flair, nudes leaked, shaking my head. So a lot of people commenting on this uh, tragedy as well. Um, I'm shocked for Charlotte. She has my full support. Stay strong, Charlotte. That's what people are saying. People are reacting to her leaked photos. Again, if I have anything to say to this about this, I don't really have much news on this anyways, but what she pretty much stated in her tweet was leaked photos. I'm, I'm again, paraphrasing something like this. Leaked photos were released of mine online without my consent. She said these need to be deleted or uh, removed from the internet as soon as possible or immediately something like that obviously we know whatever is on the internet technically never leaves the internet but we understand what her point was there she doesn't want them there obviously and um you know ha this happening with so many superstars apparently right um whoever's doing this i mean there's a series of superstars that have been getting this in the past few months as soon as page hit the headlines everybody after that has just been one after the other the other the other and people are reporting it like 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 straight fire man too much of this is being you know released on the internet and you know to uh, people obviously it doesn't seem like a big thing for some people but obviously the people that have it released you know if you're somebody who was in the state or condition of page you obviously knew that taking your life was a viable option for her she wanted to do that right and it's sad to see that happen with something like this happening to somebody who is superior like charlotte you know obviously um uh you know this hopefully doesn't affect her career uh i don't think i don't think it should anyways um but i don't know how bad the leaked photos are i don't really know at all so technically the thing about this is that uh, i don't know who you know what they are or what uh she exposes in them i don't know anything about that man i don't i don't i don't I'm, i don't roll that way man i don't do that okay uh, i don't sit on the internet doing that kind of crap but you know whatever happened to her um you know it's uh i don't know what else to say it's 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 pathetic for the people who did it but over top of that this should not affect her career just like it shouldn't affect Paige's career it shouldn't affect anybody's career because if you think about it this was personal right it's personal for her and for everybody else they should not know it right so they do know it but technically they shouldn't have known it so in the end you shouldn't really even care what happens uh or what is released because technically it's not for you to care about it happened now we care about it because obviously people love looking into people's uh, other people's privacies nowadays uh, i'm not gonna lie people have done it but you shouldn't really if if, if they weren't on the internet to begin with, obviously you wouldn't care about them. But once they're there, you do care about them. You just got to understand and, and know how to or have that inside of you to not care about it, right? Not be supporting these things. And hopefully, uh, I'm speaking I'm speaking directly to WWE, not to look at this and be like, well, okay, we know what kind of person she is now. She's not going to get a run. She's not going to be the next champion. Bury her. This is what she deserves. You know, unless she's done something in WWE that's pissed people off, this is barely anything i don't i think outside of wwe charlotte's a a nice person right she's genuinely good she doesn't have anything bad to say to anybody she's funny she's 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 energetic right nobody in the wwe or even outside of the wwe deserves something like this and these leaked photos you know hopefully um you know she didn't deny them so apparently and this was from her tweet thing that she did not deny them like alexa bliss and summer ray did and apparently people are still saying that those ones are real this is very, very uh, weird. It's very, very, um, I guess, tragic as well because this is happening all at once. You know, who, who who's going to be next, right? Who's going to be next? Um, and hopefully the people that uh, may be targeted next, hopefully they don't have these on their personal, uh, you know, whatever, their cell phone or whatever the case is on their personal private uh, 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 accounts or whatever. Hopefully they don't have it. Because then if they do, they could be the next victim of this. So Charlotte, again, reporting. Hopefully she does okay. Hopefully she is better. But um, 
this no by no means should affect her career. If those Alexa Bliss ones are real, which I don't know, even know about, then technically you got to think about it. if those were real, then her career and, 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 you know, if those were real and, you know, WWE seen them, why didn't, you know, they bury her? Why didn't they put her on the, uh, on the low card and, you know, have her be jobbing up to people and you know she's the women's champion right now she's on top of the world right so technically charlotte should remain where she is and not be degraded because of somebody's uh enthusiasm for whatever the case was but that's that ladies and gentlemen charlotte flair leaked photos online again another tragic incident happening today now other news you know this isn't really a tragedy or anything but it is uh uh news that i got a report on the undertaker arrived in new york city uh to undergo a special surgery this news broke out yesterday and again i told you i was supposed to report this yesterday but i didn't get the time so i'll report it today so undertaker man first of all i don't really want to be reporting this and here's the one number one reason why man i know he's getting surgery right i thought people were reporting on this because they were genuinely scared that you know you know uh he's in the hospital what's going to happen to him and i was like oh he's getting hip surgery right you don't need to report this you, you know you got to leave the guy and have you let him have his own privacy right posting these kinds of things that he's in the hospital or whatever or not you know people do all this to get publicity right like you got to understand man i don't really want to be reporting this but i'll do it just because uh for the sake of reporting it we know undertakers in new york we know he's taking surgery there's no need to get into the guy's private life and be posting stuff like this i don't I don't really, I don't want to say I don't care, but really I don't care. The only reason I don't care is because I already know and I don't need to be reporting this because we already know what's happening, right? This is really a news that I don't want to be talking about, but I'll get to it and I'll finish it off quickly. One month after WrestleMania, the phenom will undergo surgery, okay? Um, the only reason this is even a news article is people have seen him going into the hospital with uh, his uh, wife, uh, formerly known as WWE. Uh, women's or divas former divas champion women's champion whatever you call her michelle mccool so the sun who's again uh a website that people don't trust as much has reported the undertaker was spotted outside of david h koch hospital in manhattan to undergo multiple procedures to heal alignments or allow uh, as he's been dealing with for a lengthy period of time Yada, yada, yada. I've already known all this stuff. He retired in Orlando this past WrestleMania. Not only could The Undertaker be set for hip replacement surgery, much like that of Mick Foley, but he's also going for what is known to be special surgery, as put by the sun. So all of their details are known at this point, or unknown at this point, due to the privacy of Taker, right, including McCool, the recovery process could be a secret one as well, which it should, right? I mean, uh, it's obviously interesting for us to report it to get the views and everything, but in terms of them, I think you just leave them alone, you know? We already knew this was going to happen, right? Um, according to U.S. News, uh, the hospital where the Undertaker will have the procedure was the number one rated in orthopedics in the United States. If my computer loads, come on, man. Okay, so there are pictures of her and Undertaker arriving down into the uh, the hospital, right? Which is sort of weird. I don't know why people take pictures, right? Unless these are paid cameramen, which I don't think Undertaker would want, anyways. But whatever the case is, I don't know who the fuck gets up to the gets up close and takes pictures of a guy in the car. Seriously, man. Now, aside from waiting to see the official prognosis, the Undertaker series of procedures, it's a waiting time. The chances of him wrestling are really slim to none. Uh, it was no surprise Undertaker did the job for Roman Reigns on the way out. After all, the dead man is one of the most selfless wrestlers of all time. Hopefully, he has a speedy recovery and can enjoy retirement with his family. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Undertaker is taking uh, or is going to get special surgery. Uh, he was reported seen at the hospital. Nothing new there, right? Don't really need to explain anything further to you. Hopefully, he has a successful surgery. And again, man, hips are no lie, man. When you get when you got hip surgery and he needs hip surgery, if you if you get hip surgery, you know, uh, is detrimental if it goes wrong, right? Like if you, those are a main part of your body. I mean, without those, you could maybe you know you'd have difficult walking. You know, you'd have difficulty sitting down, all that stuff. You'd pain a lot, and you know, um, and that's uh, that's an important thing that he needs to get done. 
Something else that was important that needed to get done was the deletion of this photo. Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman, this is, you know, if they're, if uh, the Undertaker, you know, uh, taking uh, surgery or Charlotte Sleek photos were big, this is even bigger right now. Roman Reigns, Strowman, for the past day or two, uh, people have been talking about this. The internet is wild on this case, bro. Titus O'Neil has taken down the photograph of Reigns and Strowman posing together. Obviously, they weren't posing side by side. If that was the case, I think Vince McMahon would even have a problem with that. But they were obviously on opposite sides of the photo. Uh, nonetheless, they were in the same photo is the point I'm trying to make here. They are breaking kayfabe. That's what people are talking about. My opinion on this. You know... Wrestling, we know, is fake fighting, all right? We know that wrestling is all scripted, it's all predetermined, and we have to know at this point, if you don't, then you got, you'll know anyways at this point right now, that everybody who wrestles in the ring, the heels and the faces are acting, all right? They are real friends, or they are friends in real life, or if they're not friends, they're just comrades, they don't hate each other, right? Um... You know, that also depends on what rivalry it is. You know, for example, The Rock and John Cena and all that stuff. But for the majority, this is all scripted as part of storyline. All right. Everything that happens in the ring is all scripted and it's not done by the profession, uh, the wrestler's leisure. It's all done by creative. So Roman Reigns and Strowman posing together, it did concern me a little bit. You know, they're breaking kayfabe, but... Kayfabe's been broken a trillion times already. More than that. Infinity number of times already. All right. This is nothing new in terms of that. Sure, you know why it sort of, sort of shocked me? is because I seen Strowman kill Roman Reigns, and now he's in a picture, you know, smiling, you know, while Roman Reigns is freaking across, you know, from him. But you got to understand, man, this is just them enjoying life outside of WWE, right? This is just them, you know, again, they're friends in real life. It's just like a television show. Take this in. People that star in The Walking Dead, I'm using an example, right? If you were to, let's say, uh, I don't know. Let's say if you hate somebody. Let's say if there's a character in The Walking Dead. Let's say if Rick Grimes, okay, he kills somebody. Okay, kill somebody in, 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 the, in, in one of the episodes. And next week we see them posing in a picture together. Nobody, nobody is going to say, you know, that they're breaking kayfabe or, you know, that this guy died in, this, in the episode. Why is he here? You know, Rick hates this guy. Why is he doing that? Because we know it's a television show. And we care for people's happiness outside of WWE. And if they want to pose with these guys, their friends in real life, go ahead. This is all for entertainment purposes. And in real life, we should know. I mean, if, if these things carried out in real life, it would be interesting, mind you. I, I'd love that. But you got to understand, the reality here is that this is all television show. If it was, you know, even MMA, even UFC. I mean, do you see like people who wrestle in the octagon, or I said wrestle, but fight in the octagon? At the end of the day, some of them, you know, go and hug each other. People that have had, you know, rivalries, you know, people who hate each other. I mean, look at what Conor McGregor and freaking Nate Diaz did. Throwing water bottles at, at each other, swearing at each other, sticking up the fingers at each other. Conor McGregor getting up throwing shit at Nate Diaz across the freaking conference room. And then after they beat the crap at each other, they hugged out because they had respect for each other, right? I mean, you know, once I saw that, I was like, yeah, that's what, you know, is, but that's what happens. You know, this must be rigged. Okay, maybe not that part, but, you know, to to criticize somebody because they're hugging or they're, they're, they're posing a picture, taking a picture with somebody that on television, there's the key word, they hate each other. You, that's that's not really a right thing, you know. You're wasting your time, first of all, because no one's going to care of what you say, okay? Especially WWE. And number two, WWE probably doesn't have a problem with this unless they've reached out to Titus O'Neil to delete the picture. Or, you know, I would assume that Titus O'Neil saw the overwhelming tweets that he was getting and said, you know what, screw this, right? Um, but to be honest, to, to begin this off with, I think this should just be, you know, if you don't want this to be private, go, don't, you just, 
and just don't let it be private. Take pictures and freaking post them on the internet of you, you know, uh, with somebody else or, you know, you, Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns posing together. But if you're going to start criticizing them that this is breaking kayfabe, you got to understand, man, this is all entertainment and they are all friends backstage, just like in any other television show, okay? It's all for entertainment. They do their job and they get paid. You got to understand that, man. They're not getting paid to stay in kayfabe outside of WWE, right? I mean, they have a hard-ass schedule that they have to do every single week. Let them have some leisure time. We already know that. We have to understand that. We have to respect that. And quite frankly, if I see these guys freaking hugging out in public and I see them killing you know, each other in WWE, I'm fine with that because I know it's a television show, right? So that's my opinion on this. This shouldn't even be re- being reported anyways, but it is because of the circumstance they're in. You know, Roman Reigns and Strowman is one of the hottest rivalries right now. So I understand it from that perspective. But in general, you just got to let it go. So again, Titus O'Neil, we saw this picture here. On Wednesday, Roman Reigns and Strowman. Roman Reigns taking a picture, apparently with his camera. And uh, Braun Strowman walking around behind him wearing his freaking baseball cap. You know, they were in Rome, obviously, taking a you know their European tour. The WWE's Raw and SmackDown rosters are touring Europe as of right now. The Red Brand's marquee performance, Reigns and Strowman, were photographed alongside Titus O'Neil. Uh, you got guys like Curtis Axel, Heath Slater, and Matt Hardy as well. And, you know, this in turn has reportedly led to several pro wrestling fans trolling Titus O'Neil. I'm just waiting for to see what Vince Russo has to say about this because I'm pretty sure he's going to be like, you know... Um, it's fake fighting, bro. You got to understand, right? I know he's going to say something like that. Um, and uh, I agree. I agree. You know, I I don't agree on a lot of people uh, or on a lot of things people say. And I agree on a lot of things the marks of wrestling say just because I think it's right. But when you have people like Vince Russo who criticizes a lot of things and his opinions are like that, but I believe a lot of things he says because they're reality. Right? There's a lot of people who don't like him just because, I guess, you know, he's sort of telling you the truth that you don't want to hear because it sounds, it sounds pretty bad when he says it. You know, it sounds like it's, it's a bad thing when he says it, but it's the truth. Right? You got to let these guys be and you got to understand this is television just like anything else. I, I'm going back to the example that I put out before. If somebody kills somebody in a television series and then they're posing pictures with them the next week, people probably won't have much of a problem. Right? And, you know, they might be joking around here and there, but they're not going to be that serious because they know it's a television show, right? The WWE superstars of both brands, Raw and SmackDown, are expected to tour Europe through the middle of the month. Maintaining kayfabe is getting tougher by the day, and Titus O'Neil did the WWE no favors by posting a photograph of the two on-screen rivals, Reigns and Strowman, all while the duo is in the midst of an extremely intense rivalry. Now, nevertheless, judging by the buzz, the picture has created online. Uh, the Titus brand sure does know how to stir up things. And as they say, any publicity is good publicity. Never change Titus. Never change. So again, pictures of Roman Reigns and Strowman both together. It did shock me a little bit, you know, knowing the circumstances. But again, you have to let it be, okay? I mean, let's say if you had a friend, your best friend, and you're, let's say Sasha Banks and Bailey, let's say... They are on the same brand, and they're absolute best friends. And let's say, let's say they hang out with nobody else except for both, of, except for them, you know, each other. Okay, just an example. You know, it'll be very difficult for somebody to not to be going on a trip, right? To be chilling out, chillaxing with their friends, and not having them around. You know, it's like friends in real life. You know, if you were to go somewhere alone and not with your friends because you're trying to protect kayfabe, you know, it's. You understand how the pressure that it puts on the person, right? I mean, they can't live their life the way they want, you know? You got to understand these are human beings. So, again, not much, uh, not, nothing much to say about that. It's just that, you know, again, it's a television show. Just let it go, man. Now, somebody apparently can't let this go. And he had to tell this to everybody uh, that listens to him or, uh, you know, is part of the WWE fan base. Triple H exposes and accuses X-Pac of being the world's worst meth dealer. This sort of gave me a chuckle, actually. So we know X-Pac, who again was arrested for dealing or handling meth and weed 
across the board. He was going to the UK for a, a wrestling event that he uh, was going to wrestle at, and apparently nobody knew where he was. He missed it and was arrested. So Xbox will have to go under. Uh, will have to undergo a hair follicle and a polygraphy test. If my computer loads, come on, man, what's wrong with my computer? This thing never works. It just freezes every time. Okay, let's get right into the news, man. In an interview with Ringside News, Sean Xbox Waltman revealed that he had seven hundred and thirty-six dollars while he was detained, and that Triple H texted him saying, seven hundred and thirty-six, you're the world's worst meth dealer." So the thirty forty-four-year-old uh, was arrested in the Los Angeles. International Airport LAX while he was boarding a flight to the UK in order to attend an IPW event in Clapham. Now, according to reports, Xbox is listed in the United States watch list by the Customs and Border Protection Agency. I didn't know that. Now, Sean Waltman also was a prior under or outstanding warrant for a DUI arrest as well as a current outstanding DUI uh, in the state of Pennsylvania where he was charged with driving at night without headlights. Now, however, he has since been released after his uh, $35,000 bail was met. Now, Sean Waltman was taken into custody by federal police after he was trying to carry meth and weed through customs officials claim Mexpoc had too much marijuana to be considered for self-use. See, that that's why they would catch you. Again, in the States, they don't catch you if you have marijuana. They catch you if it's over... According to their policy, if it's too much, right, over over saturated or just overstated too much. If it's too much, they're gonna obviously detain you there and take you to uh, take you into custody. Now, officials claim the Xbox had too much marijuana to be considered self uh, use only for self use only, which we know the police report contains several essential details regarding the situation. Here are a few uh, of them right here: three cannabis chocolate bars. Two THC liquid cigarettes, 15 meth capsules, and 23 meth capsules. The large quantity of pills plus the large quantity of U.S. currency are associated with narcotic sales. Now, Sean Waldman, who was the member of the NWO DX, you know, will have to go under, uh, undergo trial in the court, apparently. Um, now, also, the pills in question will be put in the lab for testing to determine if they contain crystal meth or not. Now... There will also be, uh, there will also be hair follic and a polygraphy test. Waltman, on the contrary, has claimed that the pills did not contain any meth and were actually a dietary supplement to deal with an infection. He posted this something called the yeast cleanse. Posted this May second, four o six p.m. We'll have to wait for the lab results to come back on my yeast cleanse capsules. In the meantime, I understand people's reason for doubt. Although Waltman has admitted to a long history for drug use, he has taken great strides in himself. He's he's remained clean for a long time. His body is buff as fuck, buff as hell. He's looking good, you know. And uh, again, I just hope that he doesn't end up, you know, going in that wrong path again. You know, I don't really know him personally, but I hope that he stays healthy right now. And hopefully, what he's saying is possibly true. But again, if the cops catch for something, they're not doing this for fun, anyways, right? They got better things to deal with. Possession with intent to sell. Combined with the angle of him flying aboard, again, which is not, that's that's a big no-no, ladies and gentlemen. Thus, the lab results are the only thing that can prove his innocence, and we hope the results are on his side. Um, there's always conflicting stories, man. People say that there's nothing in this, you know, and the, and the cops say that there is stuff in this, and they don't, you know, they're going to confirm it. You know, there's always people who get caught like this say that, you know, uh, uh, they aren't, dealing with this or they don't have this kind of stuff on them or it's not part of the you know supplement but then the cops are not going to agree with you and sometimes they do end up lying sometimes just for the sake of uh trying to uh, save yourself innocence which doesn't really work or just sometimes you know they may be telling the truth i don't know but ladies and gentlemen xbox again uh obviously handling meth and weed and we got some inside news on our guy again uh, with his uh yeast cleanse apparently they're going to be testing this for lab results. Triple H accuses Xbox, uh, Xbox of being the worst dealer. I don't know if he uh, sent that to him. It sounded like he sent it as a joke. Because um, if it was... I don't know. If it was uh, a legit thing, I don't know if he would send... If he had sent... If he would have sent it him 
uh, a text anyways. You know, probably just talk to him on the phone or whatnot if he's doing okay. But it looks like he sent this text out of, you know, out of just, you know, a jokingly fashion. Again, I'll, re- I'll read you what he said. He's Triple H said, three or 736, you are the world's worst meth dealer. That's what he said. So uh, it sounds like he was joking. You know, I could I could see Triple H behind the screen, you know, being like on his phone, being like, oh, 330, 736, you're the world's worst meth dealer. You know, like laughing his ass off behind the fucking uh, cell phone screen, you know. So whatever. But uh, again, I just wanted to let you guys know the information about X-Pac. He's going to have to go to go trial anyways. Okay, you can't be doing this shit. Um, so that's that, ladies and gentlemen. And before I end off this video, WWE Rumors Reports News Controversy Podcast. Let's talk about something recently that happened, okay? So we know Chris Jericho obviously left the WWE. Bid farewell to him, all right? He was sent off uh, in a pretty... Uh, Good closing, good way they closed out SmackDown with having him be injured and stuff. I would have had a little bit more go on to that with what Kevin Owens did to Chris Jericho this past uh, SmackDown Live to, uh, you know, sell the injury even more to make it look more legitimate. Just to recap what happened, Chris Jericho lost the U.S. title, got smashed into the ring post, the graphic, with a steel chair uh, around his neck. So that pretty much smashed his face and bent his neck. I would have had Kevin Owens uh, powerbomb Chris Jericho into the uh, the SmackDown announce table. You know, I would have had him do that. Maybe even all the tables that are there. And, and just do what Strowman did, you know. Just come back after and keep on powerbombing, keep on powerbombing. And, you know, and then Chris Jericho gets carried into onto a stretcher and walks out or, you know, gets rolled out. Walks out, maybe has the peace sign or the thumbs up or whatever. And uh, that's a bid farewell for now, right? So that if he's gone for about one or two months... You know, per storyline, it's a little bit believable. But either way, we know that he's going out anyways, and obviously he's not going to be going out with a U.S. title, so that's why he had to lose it to Kevin Owens. Now, Kevin Owens, he did not use the typical powerbomb to win the match. He actually used a DDT on the floor rather than his usual apron powerbomb. And the reason for that was he paid tribute to two legends. This is just quick, quick news. I just want to tell you the story, just, you know, to give you guys something to end off with here, Jericho needed to be written off television this week as he was about to start his tour tomorrow, actually, May 5th, uh, with Foz, and he will, he will be taking a hiatus from the company for the foreseeable future. His dates are actually set for the next month, so we don't, I, don't think he, I don't think so that he'll be back in a month. Maybe all summer he'll be back possibly at the end of the summer or something like that, but not not right away. Now, while many expected some sort of assault from Owens to lead to an injury angle for Y2J, fans were surprised that KO didn't use the apron powerbomb, which was which has sidelined many of his opponents. He didn't use that, right? The 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 final blow to the person, and you know that takes them out for a long time. He didn't do that. He did something different. Instead, Owens' brutal attack on his former best friend began with a DDT to the concrete outside in the ring. This was very reminiscent. Of the injury angle used by Jake the Snake Roberts and Ricky Steamboat back in 1986. According to SCScoops.com, this was a deliberate choice by Jericho and Owens to pay tribute to the infamous moment that saw Steamboat sideline after Roberts attacked an, uh, on an edition of Saturday's night uh, main event. The Roberts versus Steamboat match was filmed 31 years before this week's SmackDown Live, almost to the day, but it would not be aired until June of that year. For those who were not familiar with the Steamboat DDT on the concrete, you can view the incident right here below on sportskeeda.com. Is where I'm getting this news for today. Now it is unknown how long Jericho will be out for again. Uh, you know he might be there, you know, away for a little bit, uh, you know, longer than we expected. Maybe even past SummerSlam, you know, the night after SummerSlam, maybe he comes back. You know, that's just a prediction, just throwing it out there. As for KO, now that he has reclaimed the U.S. Championship, he can continue his new Face of America gimmick. Chris Jericho has been known to pay homage to legendary wrestlers and classic moments from the WWE. Obviously, Jake the Snake Roberts, the DDT, and everything. Uh, the Jake Roberts and DDT, Ricky, uh, the Dragon Steamboat was a pretty, I believe it was a, uh, 
a good story that they were telling, a good, uh, a popular one in back in the day, and uh, paying homage to them, you know, respecting them. Obviously, you know, the DDT was made and famous by Jake Roberts, and nowadays nobody really uses it to have much effect. But I think it's slowly starting to gain some importance. I mean, we've seen Alexa Bliss do it on Bailey two times in a row, making it look devastating. Kevin Owens using it here. Maybe we'll bring that back, you know. Um, and, you know, it is, it's sad to see Jericho leave as he has been arguably the most entertaining character in all of WWE and possibly with his run with Kevin Owens, the most funniest guy I've ever seen on the mic in, in the PG era, right? He can adapt so well. And he is truly the GOAT on his tights that is written, the GOAT, he is the GOAT, all right? WWE, uh, you know, hopefully they're... They have some, uh, before he left, hopefully they had some uh, talks and when he'll return and, you know, obviously have plans for him later on. Hopefully they didn't uh, just let him go or whatever. Obviously, they'd be foolish to do that. However, this was the perfect time and the perfect way to ha- let him leave. You know, everything was perfect here, man. The payback incident, him having, you know, losing the U.S. championship, having his last run, you know, giving him a title right before he leaves and giving him the opportunity to pay homage to Jake Roberts with that DDT. Um Obviously, if Kevin Owens can, uh, uh, you know, if Kevin Owens can do that to Jericho, you know, this catapults his career. He takes out Jericho, and uh, maybe Jericho comes back and wants a U.S. title again, maybe after two months or whatnot. But Kevin Owens used the DDT specifically on the floor to pay tribute to two legends. That's the rumors. That's the news. That's all I got to say for you guys. And I just wanted to say this because it just popped my mind. You know what? I'll have this report, and I'll just say this to you guys because it seems like a very interesting way and something that, you know, uh, you know, wrestlers nowadays, you use a lot of moves from previous superstars and, uh, sometimes they're just used, you know, as finishers or whatnot. And that's fine. Right. But when you specifically do one spot to really, you know, strike a quarter, you not in the bad way. Right. But to really, you know, uh, tell everybody that, you know, we did this to pay homage to somebody. It really, you know, tells you how infamous or how famous, the guy was for his DDT, known as Jake Roberts. So, you know, Kevin Owens, new face of America gimmick. Hopefully that continues and on to SmackDown Live. And we will see, uh, you know, Chris Jericho, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, I wish him the best with his Fozzie tour and his uh, music recording uh, uh, career. He has a podcast. He has set, he's set for himself, man. Does DDP yoga. He's got a lot of things on his hand, man. He's one of the most popular one of the most uh, hardworking guys, just like John Cena, you know, just an example out there doing these multiple things and now taking a break from, break from wrestling uh, in the most best, in the most beast way he could do it, um, walking out like this on SmackDown Live. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in to how long was this freaking almost 50 minutes and i said i wouldn't go over an hour long thank you so much if you stayed this long if you are here to this point if you're here and you're still listening to me right now comment in the section below at what time it is right now or you know whatever time you uh uh were listening this podcast up to or just or just comment at the bottom uh you know here until the end or whatever some shit like that just to let me know how many people actually sat down and listened to this? It was a long ass podcast, spoke about a lot of things. Thank you very much, guys, for the people that stayed. Thank you for everybody that viewed in. Thank you for everybody that tuned in. Uh, I will possibly be having these kinds of podcasts once a week, sometimes Fridays, sometimes Saturdays. I probably won't be available tomorrow that much, but I will try to post some videos up tomorrow. That's why I decided doing this today. I will see you in the next video, in the next podcast next week. Stay tuned for my. Um, and daily videos on my channel regarding everything about WWE and any other news. I will see if I can put up a Movie Maker Talks video about the world of news, entertainment, and everything like that that goes on. I'll see if I can pull up a rant or something and talk about something randomly for you guys to be entertained by. And that will be posted hopefully this weekend. If I, you know, if I can't find something, uh, I will uh, let you guys know. And I will uh, I'll, actually, you know what? This week I'll attempt. I'll actually attempt to. Uh, think of something because ha- I have a lot of ideas I'm not able to put them on paper right now so you can also stay tuned for the Movie Maker Talks video make sure you tune into my channel uh, WWE Movie Maker uh, subscribe hit the notification button 
uh, notification bell. Also subscribe to the Movie Maker Talks channel. I know there's not a lot of activity going around there, but I will try to increase the activity and the videos there. Again, hit that notification bell on that channel as well, WWE Movie Maker and Movie Maker Talks. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 minutes on the dot. We're here. I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for tuning into this video. I will see you sooner than later. Have a nice day, guys. Stay cool, man. Peace out.